This video explains how to remove the time component from a daytime object in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the daytime object that we can create with lines two to five of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data object called daytime is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the R Studio console by running line six of the code. And then you can see that we have created a vector object which contains four different elements. And each of these elements contains a date component and a time component. Now let's assume that we want to remove these time components using the basic installation of the R programming language. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines eight to 10. So in these lines of code, I'm using the format function in combination with the s.posixct function. And within this function, we need to specify the name of our data object and we need to specify the format of our current date and time object. So in this case, the first value corresponds to the month, the second value corresponds to the day, the third value corresponds to the year, and then we have hours, minutes, and seconds. And then we also need to specify the format argument of the format function. And in this case, we only want to keep month, day, and year. So after running lines eight to 10 of the code, you can see that a new data object is appearing at the top right, which is called date one. And we can print this data object to the R Studio console by running line 11 of the code. And then you can see that we have created another vector object. And this vector object contains only the dates that correspond to our input date and time object. So in this first example, I have explained how to use base R for this task. However, it's also possible to use the lubridate package to keep only the date component of a date time object. And this is what I will show you in the next part of this tutorial, starting in line 13 of the code. So as a first step, we need to install and load the lubridate package, as you can see in lines 13 and 14 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 14 of the code. And then in the next step, we can use the MDY HMS function instead of the s-posix-ct function. And within this function, we simply need to specify our date and time object. And then as in the previous example, I'm specifying the format argument to be equal to mdy, and I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling date2. So after running lines 16 and 17 of the code, this new data object called date2 is appearing at the top right, and we can print this data object to the console by running line 18 of the code. And then you can see that our resulting vector object contains exactly the same dates as the vector object that we have created in example one. So in the next example, I want to show you another alternative, which is based on the lubridate package. And as in the previous example, I'm once again using the MDY HMS function to apply this function to our date and time object. However, this time I'm using the round function instead of the format function, and I'm rounding our date and time object to days. So after running lines 20 and 21 of the code, another data object called date three is appearing at the top right, and we can print the content of this data object to the console by running line 22. And then you can see that this time we have once again returned our dates that correspond to our input date and time. However, in addition to that, the round function has also returned a time zone. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. 
Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.